This is Surfrock66 of the Elements Minecraft server, and I want to talk about item filters and sorters today. I've seen a lot of great videos out there talking about how to build an item filter or an item sorter. Impulse SV has a really good one. Uh, Waddles has a good one. There's lots of others out there. But what I have not seen are videos explaining how they work. Uh, the big thing I saw in those videos was the fact that people said, oh, put this many items in this slot of the hopper, or this many items in this slot. And it all seemed kind of random, and I never really understood uh, what the different numbers meant. And so I did some science to figure it out, and I think I've got a pretty good handle on uh, what are the different configurations needed to make uh, uh, item filters work. So in principle, all item filters do the same thing. There is a hopper. The hopper has a certain number of items in it, a comparator looks into that and emits a redstone signal. And depending on what's in there, the redstone signal has a varying length. If the length is long enough to power this redstone up here and power this block, that activates this repeater sending a signal through this and turning off this torch. When the torch is on, nothing can pass through the hopper. When the torch is off, things can pass through the hopper and stuff will start coming through. In a hopper, stuff passes through from the first slot. So you can see there's a whole bunch of items in here. If I add another one, stuff is going to fall out that first slot. If I add something here, stuff will still fall out through that first slot. Okay, so the important thing here today is that we want to make it so the items in the first slot are our selected items uh, to pass through. I have two configurations here. This one is a little bit deeper, but can be put right up next to each other. This one here is a little bit shallower and uses one less redstone dust. However, they require an air gap between them. And it's kind of up to you which one you like best. I have configurations that I use for both of these, and I'll show you the pro cons of uh, why they work in a sec. So over here, we have kind of our lab. And I want to show some information about the different levels of redstone signals depending on the item. So these are non-stackable items, wooden shovels. If I put one in, we get three redstone signal lengths. 2 brings us to 6, 3 brings us to 9, 4 brings us to 12, 5 brings us to 15. Pretty straightforward. I do not think that is useful for item sorting. Second thing in here is going to be items that stack up to 16, right? To start, I'm going to put in one egg. That emits a signal of 1. Then I'm going to put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Up, oh, that brings us to signal length 2. Now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That brings us to signal length 3. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That brings us to signal length 4. Okay. Now we're going to look at the times 64 items. Okay. So here's 1 to bring us to signal strength 1. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, brings us to signal length 2. Brings us to signal length 3. And brings us to signal length 4. Okay? So, why does all of this matter? Because we need to control the output signal to these and understand how and why they work. Okay? So, why do I have two configurations over here? Well, depending on your need, one will work better for you than the other one. Let's take a look over here. This one is nice because it will work right next to each other. If you are space limited, you can use this item filter directly next to one another, right? The problem is it requires a high amount of the items you are filtering. In this case, it is 41, okay? If you're using something like netherite blocks, that's not going to be an option for you. It's just ridiculous just to get the filter started, okay? But for other things, this might work. If you're space limited, uh, this could be a great solution. I tend to not be space limited, so I don't like to use this as much, right? It also uses one extra redstone. If you're filtering a lot of items, this one extra building block and one extra redstone may matter to you. It's up to you. Over here, though, we have a system that is only two back, so it's a little smaller like that, but you have to have an air gap between them, and I'm going to show why. You can see here, we have our 45 uh, items that stack up to size 64. Uh, I'm going to get into why these are called slime poop in a minute. You can see I have 45 of them here, right? Once I hit a 46th item, that is strong enough to power this redstone signal, signal one further, which activates that block, unlocks the hopper, items pass through. 
no matter how many items I add here, even if I get this to 64 and the whole thing backs up, we are never going to emit a redstone signal strong enough to bleed over into this block. And that is why we can say this is overflow protected. If the entire system overflows, you are still not going to bleed the signal over here and dump this hopper out. Okay. There is a configuration for that that works over here as well with these. Even if I make it 16, we're not bleeding over into the next one. It stops at that one. Okay. So because of that, this system is called overflow protected. You can see here, overflow protected times 64 stackable item. 41 of the item you want to filter. One each of our uniquely named stackable to 64 item. And over here, for an overflow protected times 16 stackable item, we have 10 of our items and one each of our uniquely named stackable to 64 items. Okay. Additionally, we're going to take a look at this other con configuration over here where you have to have an air gap between them. In this case, the order is a little bit more complex, but you are only dealing with one of the sortable items. Okay. So, each of these weighs a little bit more. They emit a stronger redstone signal based on how many of them you have because they only stack to 16. So in this case, I use four of my uniquely named stackable to 16 items. In this case, I use three of my uniquable to 64 uh, stackable items and then one by one. In this case, any additional items you put in will filter straight through because you'll be hitting that redstone signal length. The problem with this configuration is if this fills up, you're going to get 64 items in this stack, and you are going to way overshoot the redstone signal needed here. You're going to be blasting it out the back, and if these were right next to each other, you'd be activating hoppers all down the line, which is not what you want. So for me, I like this system a little bit better. You cannot put them next to each other, but you only need to put one item in that you are trying to filter. Okay. Also, uh, one other thing you should note, in this system, one item usually gets stuck in the hopper below as well, just because of the way of the timing that it locks. And so really, in order to do this, you're actually using two of these items, which is still not that as expensive. Over here, you'd be using 42 of those or 11 of those. Uh, for me, the expense of that is just a choice. Okay, so if we come over here, you can see our non-overflow protected time 64 stackable item sorter, the item. 4 times 16 uniquely named stackable items, 3 times 64 stackable items uniquely named, 1 uniquely named stackable 64 item, and 1. For the non-overflow protected times 16 stackable item, 1 item, and then 1 each of our times 16 uniquely named stackable items. We can never send these through the system. If we send one of our uniquely named items through the system, let's see here, send one through, this brings the count up over the redstone threshold, and we'll start dumping items in that first slot, in which case the filter breaks down, right? That is why we uniquely name them. Now, I can see wanting to filter uh, slime balls one day, and I can see accidentally throwing slime poop in the system, right? In which case, you just start breaking down your item filters. It is a bad idea. And so I always create an emergency slice at the front for my times 16 and times 64 stackable items. It is exactly the same principle, except in this case, I have truly uniquely named items here. I will never be creating more of these. These are just to catch the slime poop at the input of any item input system. This one over here, even more uniquely named. So if I'm chucking ender pearls in the system and I accidentally throw some ender poop in, they're going to get filtered right here at the beginning and they will never make it to the rest of the system to mess it up. Now, big picture, this entire space is going to be turned into big old water streams and I'm going to be filtering every item I've got, right? And the whole thing is going to have overflow and it's going to be a big mess. But using these configurations right here, I think it's pretty easy to set up a system that's going to be adaptable to your needs, depending on your space, depending on how many items you want to filter, depending how much redstone you want to use. Hopefully this video gave you the information needed to make the right choice and right setup for you. I'm going to show these one more time. Overflow protected times 64 stackable item. You can take a screenshot there if you would like. Overflow protected times 16 stackable item. Non-overflow protected times 64 stack uh, stackable item. 
non-overflow protected times 16 stackable item. That's all I've got for you today. This is Surfrock66 of the Elements Minecraft server, signing out. Mm -hmm.